Welcome everybody to the versatile world of sketch notes. This is part of my ditch that copier series, and we're going to be taking a look at the versatility of sketch notes, and uh, I like to also say the many faces of sketch notes, the, the different ways that sketch notes can look. And we're going to be featuring some of the uh, ideas that I've learned from one of my sketch noting mentors herself, Sylvia Duckworth. The bit that you see here is uh, bit.ly slash DTC sketch. Uh, is, uh, is for you to keep and uh, you can have access to these slides um, for reference as we go forward. So I'm going to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Adam Wattis. I am a uh, tech integration coach for grades 6 through 12 for cutler Arosi Joint Unified School District out here in rural central California. So I'm not in the California that you normally see on t TV. This is not the Bay Area. This is not uh, uh, Los Angeles or San Diego. This is, uh, it's, you probably would think you're in the Midwest if someone just dropped you out of an airplane and you landed here. Um, we, we are um, <clears throat> we're in the middle of everything. Within 30 minutes from my classroom, I can be in the uh, giant sequoias, an hour and a half in Yosemite, a couple hours to a wine country or a beach. So we are centrally located right smack in the middle of California. Um, <clears throat> So just a little bit about me, uh, I've, this is now my 16th year in education. The first 10 years I spent uh, as a U.S. and world history teacher for middle school and high school. And the last six years I've been on assignment as an ed tech integration coach. Um, on this, uh, <clears throat> where I work uh, out here in rural central California, um, the uh, community I serve is very small, very impoverished. Um, a lot of gang violence and their students are about 95% are the uh, children of Mexican migrant farm workers with about 4.5% Filipino and I can probably count all the white kids I've ever taught on one hand. Uh, that, that is the uh, demographics of where I work and a lot of what I do is geared toward the uh, learning, specific learning needs of that community and a lot of these needs, um, these uh, these strategies are, are, are good just for, for anyone but that's, uh, the, those are the uh, the issues that, that, that I deal with. Um, again, you have my uh, my personal um, email address here to contact me uh, today, tomorrow, or two years in the future. Um, you have my um, my personal website there, techcoachwaters.com, where I house all of my training resources. A uh, bitly there to uh, subscribe to my blog. I blog almost daily with uh, useful ed tech tips, and probably the easiest and fastest way to get a hold of me is through social media on Twitter, Instagram. I am at techcoachwaters. Give me a follow. I always follow back. So um, before we uh, jump in completely into sketch noting, I, I would like to uh, offer this uh, to first person to tweet a picture of their screen during the session and tag me at Tech Coach Wattis. We'll receive an autograph copy uh, copy of the book my wife Catherine and I co uh, co uh, co wrote. Um, it came out in October. It's called The Complete Ed Tech Coach, An Organic Approach to Supporting Digital Learning. This is not just for tech coaches. This is for teachers, for administrators, anybody who wants to uh, up their game when it comes to the integration of ed tech. And we do actually talk a lot about sketch notes uh, within our book. So, again, the first person to, from a mass queue to send me a tweet um, of their screen during the, during, uh, the session will definitely um, um, DM me, and I will uh, coordinate it a way to uh, send you an autographed copy of our book. So let's go ahead and start here with the why. Why sketch notes? I, I found this uh, cool graphic online a while back, and I think it really encapsulates um, why you'd want to use sketch notes because it, it uses both sides of the brain. Your right side of the brain, as it says there, is for the visual, and then the left side of the brain uh, is your verbal. So it, it, it does you know, it tackles both sides of the brain. If, the, if we can get, get kids to engage uh, more of their brain um, in their learning, then definitely we, um, we're, it's going to be a win there. Again, it's, as it says there, it's, it's about ideas, not about the art. A lot of times in, my, in the years that I've been uh, pushing sketch only with students, uh, kids are like, oh, mister, um, I'm, I'm not a good artist. I don't draw, I don't draw very well. I'm like, you know what? It's not about how well you draw. So I'm going to show you in a few minutes my favorite sketch note of all time, and it's stick figures. It's about how you um, represent the ideas and organize your thinking. Um, but that's really what uh, how it um, what I'm looking for in sketch notes. But I tell kids, you know, if you've got some art skills, hey, get down, show off. Uh, and if kids are who are skilled with, with art and they want to show off, let them. It, it, but remind them, it's not about the art, but you know what, if, if they want to put in that extra work, anytime we get kids to go above and beyond um, with their learning, it's it, it's going to be a win. It's, 
going to be a win-win for, for you and, and the student. So if they're, if they're really good at art, have them show off. If not, remind them. It's about how you represent the idea. So it's, as we'll talk about, I, I like to call sketch notes or uh, organic student generated uh, graphic organizers. So it, it's about organization of ideas and represent, for representing, you know, textual ideas in a visual manner. So again, I like what it says there at the bottom. It says progress, not perfection. Okay, I'm looking for a, a, seeing the progress of your learning. And sketch notes is a great way to see that process of learning. Because learning should be it's a, it's about the the journey, not necessarily the destination. So what can you sketch note? Pretty much anything. Anything that you can read or watch or listen to can be sketch noted. Whether you're having kids read a section of the book, whether you're having them listen to and take notes on a lecture. Well, um, to sketch note the theme of a novel or some kind of uh, some kind of writing, uh, taking the written notes. So I'll circle back to that. Watching a video, reading an article. These are all common things that I've had uh, uh, I've coached kids on sketch noting throughout the years. But I am, um, if you may be wondering, where, where, where's the best place to start? For me, I, I like to start with handwritten notes. That, that's where I usually take, have kids sketch note the first time. The first time I have kids sketch notes, I work with the teacher. I go, all right. Let's find something that you've had kids take notes on. They have notes already. They've already kind of processed them for information. So where I work, we are an avid national demonstration school. So we're big on the whole avid, on, on avid and the Cornell notes and focused note taking process. And um, as I've collaborated with our um, our avid teachers, I hear uh, one of the things I've heard a lot from them is the idea of of metacognition and and um, revision of notes thinking about your thinking and constantly revising those notes because that's that process that really helps that learning become sticky so usually a good jumping off point for sketch noting is, is have kids take some written notes that they've already taken something they've already begin to process and that revision that metacognition is now it comes within taking those written notes and transforming them into sketch notes um, and that, that's a really good way to get them to think about their thinking why did I write that down how can I now uh, apply what I wrote um, important information and how can I transform that into something visual um, so that, that that's a great place to start but again anything that you see on this on this slide here um, is uh, is something that you can sketch now but again my favorite way to get the kids started take your written notes let's transform them into sketch notes so a lot of questions are like, well, what can our kids do? And I go, heck, yes, they can. So, and I, I want to take a look at my, we're going to take a look here at my all-time favorite sketch note. Um, and this comes from the actual very first time I taught sketch notes um, with students. And I'll, I'll kind of give you the summary of how it works here. So we're going to, if you're, uh, um, <clears throat> when you have these slides, you can click right here on my Cardinal Innovation Center logo, which is the logo for my, my Google Innovator project. You click right here. And it'll take you to a link to uh, a page that shows my all-time favorite sketch notes. So my all-time favorite sketch notes um, <coughs> was um, early on in my tech coaching career, and I was uh, working with a sixth-grade uh, ELA in history teacher. And this history teacher, he, he was on his way out. He had a foot out the door. He was ready to retire, and he kind of wanted to go out with the bangs. Like you know what, I want to try something new. I heard some good things about sketch notes. You know, um, so I, he uh, he taught a lesson on ancient Rome. So he had them read the book. He he did a, le a lecture, and the kids took notes on it. And so our jumping off points was their their written notes uh, from his uh, lecture um, on ancient Rome. So we're gonna scroll down here on this page, and we're, we're gonna have to go down a little bit down to the section we have on the Punic Wars. All right, so this is my all-time favorite sketch note right here. So um, part of his lesson was uh, – <clears throat> one of the lessons he taught about ancient Rome was on the Punic Wars. And so th this teacher here, a lot of times we, we hear the word, oh, yeah, lecture, drill, and kill. We, we, that's not a good thing. He, he was actually a very talented lecturer. He, he was old school, but he was a great storyteller. And you know, a lot of times when you lecture, kids kind of tune out. But the kids, man, that they were – hanging on his every word, writing down all his ideas and his metaphors and his, and his examples. And so I, I'll never forget this because um, I, I worked with him for years and I remember what a good storyteller he was. And, and so the kids took their, took their notes and I said, all right, well, we're going to 
take all your notes that you learned about the Punic Wars, and we're going to transform them in, in the sketch notes. And we're, we're going to go over the uh, the uh, in more detail the uh, kind of the anatomy of a sketch note and some 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 best practices and steps. But uh, the way I taught it was this: I go, all right, let's look at your notes, look at what you read, and determine how many components were there in what you learned. You learned about the Punic Wars, so they thought about it, and we can see in this student, this student. Uh, looked at their notes and decided, well, you know, there's three components because in, in the lesson, my teacher said that the, the Punic Wars was a series of three wars between Rome and their North African rival Carthage over domination of the Mediterranean region. So she said it was three wars. So she decided, okay, I am going to divide my paper into three parts. One part will represent each component. So we have a uh, this part of this space up here is for war number one. She uh, she put a, a space for war number two and then divided up for war number three. So she she looked at what she was learning and said, there's three main components. So I'm going to divide up my paper into that many spaces. And if you notice, there wasn't uh, war number one. This area right here is smaller than war number two because she looked at her, her notes and she noticed I have a lot more information for war two and three than I do one. So she strategically decided to, to dedicate more space to those two components rather than the first one here. So in a nutshell, this is kind of like the, the lecture that this teacher told. He's like, he, he compared it to a boxing match. He goes, the Punic Wars were kind of like a three round boxing match between Rome and Carthage. And um, so what he says like or war number one was like the first round of the boxing match and in round number one the, the bell was over and on points rome won the first round but round number two started and carthage made a comeback and they were able to win round number two but he he went on in more detail about round number two he's like you know what? i want to explain to you how carthage um was able to come back and win round number two is because they they changed their strategy in battle they decided um to have a new uh a new a new strategy and it came from one of their new uh leaders in battle his name was hannibal he was a brilliant general and one of his strategies against the romans was to use elephants in battle he's like hey we have we're from africa we have elephants here why don't we put some armor on them we can train them and we'll have soldiers ride them and charge them into battle against the romans the same way that we use tanks so if you look closely at this sketch note the students there's a lot of stick figures, not a great artist, but the ideas are, are powerful here. So the teacher said, hey, they used elephants in battle the same way we use tanks today. So using a simple mathematical expression here, a poorly drawn uh, elephant with an equal sign uh, to, a, to a poorly drawn tank here, um, the, the point is made. And if, if we look at, if you look at more from the, from this lesson, you'll notice that you, you will see this is in common. You'll see the tank and the elephant. Now, that was a huge part that the kids really, really uh, glommed onto from this lesson. But what I like to say is that that, that idea, if she just would have wrote that down and tried to memorize it, yeah, she might remember it. But this is now tattooed in her brain. She took that, th this key idea from, from war number two and, and she drew it in, in, in a mathematical way. And this is now really stuck in her brain. Um, much more than if she just wrote, wrote it down as a piece of text. Now going on to war number three, uh, in war number three, the teacher went on to, to explain how war number three was the fight ended up being the final round of of the the boxing match and Rome threw the knockout punch. So yeah, in his lecture, he talks about how Rome they sailed to Carthage, they burned the city to the ground, they sold the surviving citizens into slavery, and then they salted the fields out there in the farms so nothing could ever grow again, and Carthage would never, ever be able to threaten Rome's uh, dominance in the Mediterranean region again. So let's take a look at uh, how she uh, portrayed some of those ideas in, um, <clears throat> in War Number 3. So if you take a look right here, here's the Roman. She, she, she drew a little village here that represented Carthage and that was on fire. You no, know, they they showed that they, they they attacked him, they killed him. But here's the one that I really think is is the most powerful for me because he talked about how salting the fields, putting salt in your in your fields in your farms prevents things from being able to grow. So what she did, she put Roman soldiers, sig figures, with salt shakers in, in 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 some fields here. I think that this is actually brilliant here. Not a great artist, but she gets the point across. And um, so I really again. She used simple figures, simple ideas, mathematical uh, expressions. The best art she can do, use stick figures to represent some complex, important ideas that tells the story 
um, from a six graders perspective of the Punic Wars. So if we were to scroll down a little bit, there's some other ones here who are uh, a little bit better, uh, better drawn here uh, from the same one. Like this one's pretty good. It's a really good, well drawn elephant, a better drawn tank here. But you, you're going to see that um, show up on many of these uh, the sketch notes from that same lesson. But I always circle back to this one because it tells kids, hey, you don't have to be good at art. As long as you can tell that story visually of what you read, what you learned, the notes that you took, then you have a successful sketch note. So uh, a great resource for sketch notes is uh, someone I, I, I'm actually proud to say is a good friend of mine now. Her name is Sylvia Duckworth. She she literally wrote the book on sketch notes. She's written two books on sketch notes. The first one uh, was this step-by-step uh, -step manual for students and teachers, and then she made a, a follow-up that was more for for students. And she is just a, a, a has a wealth of knowledge on the subject, and you know just many many many. Um, uh, resources for take, doing sketch notes digitally and and paper and pencil, but she she has a lot of great tools. If you're looking at, hey, I want to do this digitally, she's got tons of ways to do it on iPads, on um, on Chrome touchscreen Chromebooks, and more. And uh, really, I, I've gone to her sessions every time that I've been able to, and I always pick up you know two or three new ideas to get kids sketch noting. So, uh, follow Sylvia on 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 Twitter. Um, she does seminars around the world. Um, if you want to learn much more about this and go into real detail about how to draw simple symbols, a lot, a lot of if you look at the cover of her book here, these are easy to draw symbols that can represent many things that can be applied to, uh, for students um, as they become better sketch learners. So definitely uh, reach out to Sylvia; she's uh, been a mentor of mine in my sketch noting journey. So let's talk about a, a, another um, example with a teacher that I've worked with. Right here, this is a, a teacher that I work with. Her name is uh, uh, Mrs. Job. Mrs. Job is a was a, a ninth grade science teacher, and Mrs. Job well, one day she approached me and she was like, "Hey, Adam, I um, I have a an observation coming up, and our our district our school's focus this year has been on on doing um, not just." Uh, on facilitating academic conversations. So they can, can you help brainstorm with me? So I'm like, all right, let's take a look at what we've worked out so far. We've talked about screencasting. We've talked about Flipgrid. We've talked about sketch notes and book snaps and all these different things that I've, I've been trying to bring to my teachers. And as we were just sitting there spitballing, she's like, hey, I, I have an idea. Um, why don't we use the sketch notes that my kids have done and have the, that be the the, the platform, the basis of an academic conversation. I'm like, all right, go ahead. Let's let's start whiteboarding that out. Let's let's see what your idea is. And and, and really, I, I didn't have to do much coaching here. She just kind of the wheels started turning, and she came up with a brilliant idea. So, <clears throat> as I showed you earlier, um, well, my favorite sketch note. That is a, a website that I maintain called the Cardinal Innovations uh, Center Sketch Note Gallery, where all the sketch notes that kids do in a variety of classes. The teachers send me their hard copies. I scan them. And I curate them on on a on a page on that uh, on that website. And anyone who goes there can just click on a grade level, and then there's a drop down menu. You click on the the subject that, that you want, and then there's all these different topics that kids have sketch noted. And you click on that, and you can see all the sketch notes kids have done over the years. She says, says, why don't we take the recent sketch notes my kids did on this lesson? And I want you to scan them, put them on the website. I'm like, all right, I can do that for you. So th this was her academic sketch notes, academic conversation recipe. So uh, once I put them on the website, I sent the link back to her, and she pushed out that link to Google Classroom. So what she did, she the first what kids are supposed to do, she part she strategically partnered them up, and she said, "All right, you and your partner will choose a sketch note from the Cardinal Innovation Center sketch notes gallery." So they opened up the link, and they had to find a, um, <clears throat> and they have to. Uh, find a sketch note that they want to talk about from, from that lesson. And so what they did, she said, if it's your sketch note that's on, that they got put on the website, because not every sketch note makes the website, I have to vet them. Um, she says, then you have to choose one that's not your own. It's somebody else's sketch note. So after they're, them and their partner uh, each chose their own sketch note that they want to talk about, they had to look at the sketch note and then just write down some, some bullet points, things for them to talk about that will allow them to explain the concept of their of their sketch of that sketch note for at least two minutes. So once they had their talking points ready, so partner A would then say, "Okay, it's my partner A would go first. Partner A would then have that sketch note on the screen, 
and then use the Screencastify Chrome extension um, <clears throat> and record themselves explaining that sketch note to their partner. But partner B couldn't sit there and just be passive. They had to ask clarifying questions to help make sure partner A talked in depth as much as they could for two minutes. And then when once the two minutes was up, that uh, partner A stopped the recording and now had a, had a record of their conversation with their partner that could be turned into Google Classroom. And once partner A was done, partner B became the person, the recorder. Partner B now put their, their um, sketch note on, on the screen and recorded themselves trying to explain the concept of partner A, while partner A now is asking clarifying questions, making sure partner B talks for at least two minutes. So then when they were both done, they submitted their recordings to Google Classroom. What what made this brilliant is that you know, a lot of times with with um, <clears throat> academic conversations, it, if in a traditional setting, you know, you have two kids or two or three kids or so, one small group conversing at a time while the rest of the class is just kind of they're sitting there and watching. And you might be able to may, maybe get through a couple groups um, in one class period. It, it takes a lot of time. Here, Mrs. Job did not have to, did not have to, she got every kid doing their, their conversation within the, the class period. And there was a record of it. And she didn't have to, uh, and on her time, she was able to go back and listen to um, each of the conversations that the kids submitted. And it, it really allowed her to dedicate more time to the in-class time um, to, toward doing that than, than having to, uh, <clears throat> to facilitate the, the, uh, the lesson. So she did this for an observation. And um, lo and behold, it, it, it was one of her best observations she had done. She had, because um, where we work, we have such a high per percentage of ELs, more than three fourths of our students are English learners. And she, um, the sketch notes, she, uh, <clears throat> she, um, she spoke with admin about how the sketch notes are a good way to get English learners um, ways to visually uh, demonstrate and show their their ideas. Uh, and then the the, uh, the academic conversation is another way to get them listening and speaking in English. So it, it ticks so many boxes of what we were trying to accomplish during that school year. So I was very proud of Dana uh, Joe pr pretty much taking some of the ideas that I'd given her and on her own develop this brilliant um, uh, recipe um, using sketch notes to uh, to meet the needs of her students. So. We have a lot of student samples here that, that, that I can give you. Um, e each one of these here is a clickable link to some, a variety of, of sketch notes that I've curated over the years. Again, I specialize in grade 6, 12. Um, if you are looking for younger students, um, I, I, my wife specializes in elementary, and I can definitely uh, send you some, um, some resources your way and the student examples. Um, from those grades, um, but I know my ninth and 10th grade science uh, teachers at our high school have been great. Our 12th grade ELA has really jumped on board with sketch noting. Um, we have some computer science ones that I think are brilliant, showing you just the mechanics and, and really a different way to how, how computers work and, and, and their studies. Um, our FFA program is huge out where, where we live, and our FFA teachers get kids to sketch note as a method of reflection on what they've learned. Um, be, me being a, a history teacher, I, I use sketch notes religiously. So um, my history examples are good for also ELA as well. Uh, but um, people might say that it doesn't lend itself as much to math. It does, but I, I'm still trying to get math teachers on on board with this. So um, if you if you know of any good math sketch notes, please send them my way. I'd love to take them out um, so I can uh, really get my, um, my math teachers um, on board uh, more with sketch notes. But th th there, there's these examples and much more if you go to my cardinalinnovationcenter.org website, click on the student portal, and scroll down to the sketch notes gallery uh, for more, more student examples. So the question may, you may be asking is, when do I have kids sketch note? There, there's so many times that you can have them sketch note. A great way, one, especially now during distance learning, is for spiral review. Um, one of the things we have to do is every Friday, um, for um, for uh, their asynchronous attendance credit, um, uh, we have to have some, you know, an assignment that shows that they worked asynchronous, asynchronously. And one thing that I've done is, is use sketch notes for that. I, I will tell students that, um, that I'm teaching right now, all right, your previous week's uh, uh, handwritten notes that you took need to be transformed into sketch notes, and you're going to upload an image of your sketch notes to Google Classroom as your, your asynchronous attendance credit. So it's great for spiral review. Maybe there was this lesson that you taught um, a month ago and you want to revisit that, all right? Have them take out those notes from a month ago 
and transform them into skill stones. It's a good way to get, to get them to re, kind of do a refresh on what on what they learned. Uh, it's great to do while watching a video. This takes some time um, and, and some skill and some practice, but as time goes on, you know, sketching or what you're learning uh, while watching a video is it, a great um, is it, a great way. If it's if it's done whole class, I, I wouldn't recommend that. But if, if kids are given that video, you know, uh, to watch on their own time, it, it's a it's a great method because they can pause and rewind. Um, I've seen it done as, as a scavenger hunt where they had to uh, look for themes w within a piece of text, and then when they found it, they had to sketch it. Uh, I like to call that a scavenger hunt sketch note. Um, uh, I've done it as an assessment where I said, all right, here's the here's the, the eight main topics that we've covered. I want you to do a sketch note that, that, that explains uh, and connects all eight topics. So I, what I've done in the past, I said, all right, here, it's time for your assessment. Here's a blank piece of paper. Here's the things that I want you, uh, that I, I'm assessing you on. Sketch note it. And um, a lot of kids who wouldn't do as well on a traditional assessment, whether it's multiple choice or fill in the blank or constructive response, a lot of them did a lot better on the, uh, on the, uh, the open-ended nature of the uh, uh, of the uh, of the sketch note, so it's it's definitely um, and those for me uh, actually were much more enjoyable to to uh, to grade than a, a traditional assessment. It's a great thing to do when you have kids reflect on some kind of event or field trip. Um, early when I when we came back to school this year again, we, we were doing everything distance. Um, I had my kids there as, as an icebreaker and it would get them to help practice their sketch noting uh, techniques. I, I had them reflect on. The, the civil unrest that happened over our summer and saw a lot of great things um, that kids um, were able to sketch and explain about civil unrest and we saw kids sketches about Breonna Taylor and uh, George Floyd and, and many many more things that were going on in our country so uh, don't focus on COVID let's focus on the civil unrest and that was a great way for them to reflect on what they had had seen or, or heard from the news and in pop culture it's a great way to as I said earlier the, this is a great way to start is reflect on written notes so you've taken uh, handwritten notes now transform them into a sketch note and it's a great thing to do right after reading something all right you just read this passage let's sketch note it um, again these are just some of the some of the uh, ways that I've done it in the past but um, these are uh, by far not the only ways uh, or times to have kids sketch note so here's kind of like your your I call is your starter kit so step number one uh, when you're working with students is to just have them identify. First thing you want, you need to identify what you want them to sketch note. Is, is it going to be, um, is it a certain steps of a process? Is it going to be some kind of a theme, a big idea? First of all, be very clear and intentional on what you want them to sketch note. Step number two here is now you need to teach the four, what I, I like to say are the four steps of sketch noting. So once they know what their purpose is, what, what they need to be looking for, now determine the number of components and sub components. So when we talked about the Punic Wars, there was three main components. The kids determined, okay, there's three components of the Punic Wars. There's three different wars, so the, the, those are the components. And what I like to say when, when, this, when the kids start doing this, they, they are creating now organic student generated graphic organizers. So what I mean by that is this. Um, I mean, I'm not, I'm not bashing graphic organizers, but when you give a kid a graphic organizer, you are telling them how to organize the information. And that may not work for the way their brain works. Maybe one kid looks at a, a, a topic or a theme and says, you know what, well, I see six components. But another kid maybe sees only four. So if we let kids with Sketchnote, they can they're able to determine what best works for their brain and how it works out. And maybe the, maybe one kid you know is uh, doesn't have all the components or are missing some connections there. That's where you have the opportunity to give feedback and maybe have them revise it later and add some things in there. So it, it really it it, uh, it it is a kind of jumping off point for a feedback loop there. But it allows kids to organize it the way they believe their brain works and really gives them some some autonomy uh, over over their learning. So once they've determined the number of, of, of components, they're gonna divide their paper into the, that many components. Uh, and then they start with the pencil sketches. So pencil first, no colors, nothing. They, they, they pencil sketch out everything within each component. And then once they have done that and they're, they're good with the pencil sketches, then what I like to do is have them trace it using a, a thin black marker. Um, I have a, a boxes of uh, fine tip Sharpies that I have kids trace with. And the reason why we trace it is for a number of reasons. One reason is that um, 
it gives kids uh, another rep, uh, another rep with, with their with their um, with their ideas. And as they're tracing, then they may begin to pick up mistakes, and allows them to then stop with the tracing, erase the pencil, and then fix it and continue tracing. It also allows kids to um, when we get to uh, uh, step number four there, the color coding, the tracing allows the lines to pop. It's much uh, uh, better um, uh, visually, um, and things are easier to see. So the color coding is not just coloring it to make it look pretty. A lot of kids think that. But color coding, if you look at your, your components, something that I picked up from my habit teachers is the idea of color coding. And uh, it really helps the brain organize information. So what I, I teach kids to do um, – so with color coding, again, they're going to – I always have kids. They are going to kind of shade, usually using um, – some kids use crayons. I prefer color pencils. So each component is – they assign a different color to it. So when they look at it, it, it really helps with the organiz, excuse me, the organizational piece <coughs> of, their, uh, of their sketch note. So, again, the color coding is a great way just to help – it helps the brain organize the information, not just in physical – uh, division, but also um, using the colors. So um, in a normal world, when you're back face to face, um, passing out materials is the next thing. So kids need blank paper, pencils, uh, things, uh, pens for tracing. So I, I like to use the uh, fine tip Sharpies, but you know, just any kind of a black pen or marker um, can work. Give them colors. If you want to give them a hard due date because a lot of times kids some kids will really get down um, with their sketch notes. If you don't give them a hard due date, they they take a lot more time than you than you really want. So, in my experience, a hard due date has definitely been um, been successful. Um, but in distance learning, um, again, I tell people distance learning. Usually, you think, okay, everything's got to be digital. No, do not do not eschew with the paper and pencil parts of learning. Um, in distance learning, people like are usually surprised to hear me say, "Well, Adam, you're you're a tech coach. You're Mr. Google everything. Why would you ever use paper?" I'm like, "Oh, I use paper and whiteboards um, religiously." And um, again, um, I, it was a, an epiphany for me back in the spring when we first started distance learning. And um, again, I assumed I have to do everything digital. And, and my students who were face to face, they were used to hearing, used to having me do paper, paper and pencil sketch notes. But now we're digital. They're like, "Hey, uh, Mr. Um, for our." Our reflections and stuff. Can we just do a sketch note and then upload a picture? And they 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 requested it of me. I said, you know what? I, I, I'm almost embarrassed that I haven't thought of that. So they, I'm like, yes, yes, you can. So kids using the, their the webcams on their on their on their devices um, or the, the 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 cameras on their phones that they have the app for your L, your LMS. Take a picture of uh, of it and have them upload it to Google Classroom or Canvas or Blackboard or Apple Classroom or Microsoft Teams or whatever whatever system you're using. You can still get the um, that learning experience using paper and pencil sketch notes um, in distance learning. So again, um, as I always say, um, how do we continue in our discussion on adapting to distance learning? Again, I encourage the use of paper and pencil notes on, on video calls. You know, if you're going to teach a synchronous lesson, you know, have them continue to use paper and pencil. Um, even whiteboards are a great way to do what I like. It's called speed sketch notes. Um, yeah, so if you're able to get kids to have a whiteboard or just some scratch paper or what we've done for a lot of our kids, we say take a piece of white paper, put it in a sheet protector, and make sure you have a dry erase a marker. That's something that's done face-to-face -face as well. Um, so, you know, maybe you have the – I can call it a speed sketch note. I'll say, all right. Here's the co concept we learned. Yeah, you have two minutes to sketch it out on your whiteboard. All right, so then what they're going to do, they're going to hold it up to, to their camera, and I'm going to go ahead and look at, at each kid and kind of give some, some formative feedback. That's another way to adapt the sketch note for, a, um, for, um, <clears throat> for distance learning. So it doesn't have to be a full-blown sketch note, but just, you know, you know my, um, one color of black and white on a sketch – on a, on a – um, on a, some scratch paper or on a whiteboard, can definitely it gets the job done. And, and again, um, if you're uploading images of uh, sketch notes to Google Classroom, um, I have videos right here. These are all links that shows you how to do how kids can turn in the images of their handwritten work, not just sketch notes, um, using the iOS app, the Android app, or a Chromebook. So these are all videos that you can share with students. Say, say, hey, we're gonna try we're gonna try this paper and pencil thing. Whether or not it's sketch notes, it doesn't matter. And Here's how you can turn this in um, for distance learning. Um, so normally I would uh, have you do a sketch noting practice. I would give you a brief lecture on on uh, uh, on the 
<clears throat> on the Union battle strategy in the in the Civil War. Uh, if you drop down some written notes and transform them in the sketch notes, you get to be the student. But uh, in this format, we're not going to be able to do that. So um, I want to thank you guys for uh, joining me uh, for this um, brief uh, uh, intro into sketch noting. And hopefully, hopefully you picked up a thing or two. Uh, uh, an idea or two from me but again what I always leave you with this sentiment when you do a session with me you get free tech support for life feel free to reach out to me through various methods whether it's through email my website um, social media is probably the easiest and best fastest way to get a hold of me uh, at Tech Coach Waters on both Twitter and Instagram uh, give me a follow I always follow back and whether it's today tomorrow two years from now I always hold myself to the uh, standard of responding within uh, 24 hours. So I want to thank you guys over there in Mass Q, way out here in California. I hope you guys have a, have a great rest of your week.